28,000 cabs on the road, Singapore has among the highest number of taxis per capita in the world. But why is it so often so hard to get a ride? For NUS professor Sumit Agarwal, who spoke at a Think Business Forum, it's one of several questions on everyday life in Singapore he has looked to answer. The taxis are going by, they're all green, they're all empty, but they don't want to stop for me. First I thought, oh, it's shift change. It's not shift change. Clearly, these guys have some reference point. They make their $100 by some 5, 4 o'clock, and they don't want to drive you anymore. To the casual observer, problems like the availability of taxis might not seem that economically significant. But seen as part of the bigger picture, Agarwal says issues like this pose highly relevant policy challenges for urban planners. That population is aging. We live in a small country, which is around 700 square kilometers. So resources are constrained. So how do we maximize the use of these resources and actually let the country grow as well? With Singapore approaching its 50th anniversary, the city-state faces a raft of policy and planning challenges as it seeks to maintain economic growth in the years ahead. And these are little things which we generally don't pay attention to, uh, but as uh, people who care about energy or environment, we should pay attention in designing uh, urban landscapes. Take some of the other behavioral questions Argawal's research is focused on. Why do people in office buildings take the elevator to go one floor up? Why not the stairs? Why do many people take a bus ride just one stop? Why not instead simply walk? And what is the best way to incentivize people to conserve resources like power and water? My observations come from personal phenomena, or for personal observations, and then I think of them expanding for a, to a research question. As might be expected from a behavioral economist, Ackerwall takes what others might see as simply passing observations, puts them through rigorous testing, and looks for causal explanations. Research for research's sake, from my point of view, is not exciting. Research should influence policy or it should influence behavior. Only by understanding what's really behind behaviors, he says, can we begin to offer effective solutions. And the key to that understanding is data. So a lot of time when I'm doing research about, say, taxi driver behavior or looking at bus rides and train rides, then I will actually try to take this to the departments, relevant departments in the ministries, and kind of tell them, this is what is happening in your data. By churning through files often running into multiple terabytes, Agarwal has uncovered nuggets of information valuable to planners and policymakers. At the end of the day, everybody wants to see numbers and facts. I mean, everything is an opinion. Even my numbers are my opinion. Uh, but I at least try to say, okay, let me get some data to back up what I'm thinking. One example, 12% of all bus rides in Singapore are single-stop rides. Inefficient journeys, often less than 250 meters that taken cumulatively, slow down the public transport system. How does he know? I actually know every bus and train ride in Singapore for three months. So every time you use your EasyLink card, I actually know what you did and where you went with it. Which bus you got on and which bus you got off. This is all for research purposes. We are not doing any nefarious activities. We are trying to help and educate uh, the Singaporean policymakers and public in, in learning to do better things. Doing things better and creating solutions is, after all, the ultimate aim. Take the case of those one-floor elevator rides. I want to understand why somebody taking the elevator for just one floor, why aren't they just walking up? Clearly, it's not their fault. It's the fault of the architect and the designer. They're making the elevator salient and the stairs non-salient. They hide the stairs so you can't find them if you want to go up one floor. So you only see the elevator, so you just take the elevator. It's convenient for you. But the challenge of changing behaviors can be a difficult one, as two separate studies on energy use have shown. One study looked at the effect on power consumption in housing blocks caused by nearby construction work. It found that usage went up around 6% as residents closed their windows and turned on their air con. But even once the work was over, residents tended to keep the windows closed and the air con on, effectively entrenching the pattern. Another study focused on a drive known as the 10% challenge and the persuasive power of children to affect change on their household consumption habits. Pupils at selected schools were encouraged to push their families to cut their energy use. As an incentive, those that could prove they had cut their bills by 10% 
had the chance of winning a prize. Some hit that target, but most were only able to cut the bill by 2 to 3 percent. Nonetheless, months after the contest was over, energy use in housing blocks that took part in the experiment remained down nearly 2 percent. So I, I can see that behavior does change, but we just need to get it to change in the right way. And the most effective way to affect change is to target the wallet. Agarwal advocates trying economic incentives first because they can influence a bigger population. Let's do everything by pricing mechanism. And if we fail to think change behavior by pricing or pure incentives, then we should think of these alternative mechanisms in trying to influence behavior. As it moves into the next 50 years of nationhood, Singapore is facing many challenges tied to its aging population and growing pressure on limited resources. For a researcher like Agarwal, its compact size makes Singapore an ideal focus. And he says these are not challenges unique to Singapore alone. Uh, the reason I'm studying Singapore is because Singapore has the cleanest data. Okay, the data quality, I believe, and it's relevant for this country. I'm also doing a lot of research on India, on China. I have data on Indonesia. I mean, these same phenomena exist across the world. For Think Business, I'm Katie Sargent.